Welcome and thanks for joining us. My guest today is Bob O'Leary. He is the head of investigations for Newix USG, Newix company. Bob, good to have you on. It's great to meet you, Tom, and thanks for having me on. And we are going to be talking about digital investigations in government at all levels. So maybe let's begin with a little backgrounder on you because you have done this, you have walked the walk and talked the talk. Sure, uh, I'm happy to fill you in on my background. I started my career with the New Jersey State Police, uh, typically as a general road duty trooper and moved into narcotics. I worked undercover for about nine years. Um, my foray into this field was rather uh, interesting as it was a, a bit of a backdoor in that most of the people that were arrested uh, for those narcotics offenses had stolen phones or burner phones or clone phones. And generally those just went into evidence and nobody did anything with them. Uh, luckily, uh, through my wife, we had a contact with the phone company. She worked there and uh, her boss, a vice president, once said, you know, if you ever need anything, let me know. And I said, well, as a matter of fact, we get all these phones and I think there's a great deal of information, but we can't do anything with them. The uh, following Monday morning, I had the director of security calling me at my office, offered to teach me how to get the data out of the phones, the uh, phone companies, the cellular phone companies, essentially... Um, signed a, a document for us uh, indicating they were the victims of the mobile phone fraud because nobody was paying the bill. So as the victim, they gave us carte blanche essentially to pull the data out of the phones because they were the owners and victims of the uh, theft of services. And as we started to get that data out of there, we began to link phone numbers to otherwise unconnected investigations. And as we did that, we started to build cases and as it became more and more for, um, uh, successful, we started doing it for other units in the state police, including the auto theft task force, major crimes and uh, organized crime. Uh, essentially seeing the success of that, the New Jersey State Police realized that there was a need for a high tech crime unit. And myself and um, one other detective were assigned to start that unit in 1996. Uh, from that, it's grown into a, a bureau that focuses on everything from uh, cybersecurity through ICAC and all of the other uh, internet crimes. Yeah, so you were really on the digital side of investigations before it became a popular term. Yeah, ironically, uh, one of the uh, one of my colleagues uh, referred to it as a pioneer, and I never really thought of it that way. But when I look back, it was we were there weren't many units out there, and there weren't any statewide. There was uh, NYPD had theirs. Uh, Jimmy Doyle ran that one, very good friend of mine. Uh, there was one out in Silicon Valley and a few others, but there wasn't a statewide um, unit. So sure, most, most people don't realize, you know, New Jersey's a little bit bigger than you think. So it was quite a lot of territory to cover. Yeah, it's, it's uh, a lot of people live there. It's a populous state and it's also geographically, like you say, bigger than you realize <laughs> until you drive from the top to the bottom. Right. But in this whole area of digital investigations and investigations pretty much all have a digital content or component, probably safe to say, in this contemporary time, what do you think is the essential data challenge now facing investigative agencies, state, federal, even non-state or federal, local? I think the biggest challenge is processing all of the available data into a single platform and being able to see it in one view. We can process data in any number of tools, but there's, oh, there's only one, frankly, that brings it in from all the sources, whether it's computers, cell phones, internet of things, such as drone um, dumps, that type of thing, cameras. We can bring it all into one platform and then being able to link all that data, that sequence of data, those sequence of events and see it in a holistic view is the biggest challenge that I've seen and I know having done these investigations, we often had evidence that came from different sources. We processed them in different platforms and then had to manually collate that relevant data. Here, we're able to do it automatically through the Newark's workstation. Yeah, I was gonna say there's a great variety of data types and the places that data originated from standard databases and applications to unstructured data. How does that all come into this and, and does it? Uh, absolutely, it does. Uh, and the ability to find, to take that unstructured data and make sense of it, whether it's text stripping 
or it's finding the metadata, it's finding those relevant pieces of information. Another uh, great feature in NOAA's workstation is pulling named entities out of the source data. So we identify people's names, uh, URLs or web addresses, email addresses, IP addresses, uh, monetary values, and uh, 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 we've built some that even have MAC addresses. If we have a suspicion in a cyber case that one machine's connected to another, we'll connect them by that unique MAC address by those machines. So the ability to pull that uh, those pieces of information of investigative value out of the data set very, very quickly, we do it automatically in the processing, gives investigators a head start on getting to the, the relevant information in that data to make their case. And what about the issue of the nomenclature and having a common definition of a single thing throughout all of the data that might be coming in? That seems to be a challenge sometimes in investigations. Uh, the, uh, For example, from sources, you might derive the word pike. This is the example I learned many years ago in law enforcement setting. And a pike can be a place, it can be a type of street, it can be something you stick somebody with, you know, multiple meanings to a given term. That has to all be harmonized, right, to be able to use it properly. It absolutely does. And uh, one of the things that we do, and when we look at that, uh, those key words or that term, we are able to look at it in essentially the context in which it's used. For instance, we can see the three lines before it or after it or 10 lines before or after or 20. So it gives you the ability to see the word in its context. Additionally, uh, Nuix does a really cool feature and I hadn't seen it before anywhere. It's an uh, index of five words. We refer to them as shingles. So that it'll index every string of five words. So a, a sentence with 10 words in it actually has six shingles, words one through five, two through six, you actually see the word and the words before and after, so you get an immediate sense of the, the context in which it's used. Uh, we also have the ability to understand the topics, so to speak, so that we're looking at the terms that we're, we're finding and the manner in which they're uh, used. Uh, a great example, uh, we had done a test for, uh, for a client to see our translation capability, and we do it with a third partner and we translate audio recordings and typically they talked in code words. And we were able to find the code word in those transcribed recordings and be able to understand where they were using the code words for essentially drug terms that we were able to look at and understand the context in which they were used. Interesting, so I guess maybe having that type of integrative platform that you've described really helps the intergovernmental aspect of investigations for example, you know, in doing undercover drug investigations for New Jersey, you must have had regular dealings with the feds, you know, the DEA and so forth. Exactly. And, and um, we did learn to build those cases with common uh, search terms, known vernacular, uh, street slang, that type of thing. So we would look for it in our data sets to see where, where it was used and what context it was used. Now we're able to actually build those lists much more efficiently because we're finding them in the data proactively. And investigations are group functions in many cases. You've got the investigator, the police on the beat directly, but then there's a whole support staff and people doing data analysis. How do you make sure that everybody has the data that, that is needed by the investigation? How do you know the scope of the data that needs to be ingested so that nothing's left out that you do integrate then into the platform? The scope of the data is actually a very important. You, you can initially find that you um, believe you've got everything relevant, but as you get into the investigation, you start to look at things like the USB devices that have been plugged in and realize that you may not have a thumb drive or an external drive that have been connected to the machine with links, you know, shortcuts that point to that. And they have, you know, the, the name of the document can be somewhat innocuous or it can be incriminating. However, it might not be anything of real value. The, the point of it is you don't know that and you can't assume. So we need to go back and find those. But in our initial assessment, we're able to see that those devices existed. We can often find the serial number for it, the date that it was used and that type of thing. So it gives you more opportunity to go back and find those additional pieces. And then as far as collaboration goes, 
Nuix has a great capability to allow multiple analysts, reviewers, investigators to access the case once it's processed in our investigate tool. So it's essentially a browser-based tool that they're able to log in securely over their VPN or their secure network and work simultaneously in the same case, searching data, connecting uh, people, connecting phone numbers and addresses and that type of thing to people. So we're able to have that team approach and support it very well through our investigate tool. And just a detail question, different numbers have associations with them. For example, a VIN for a car has a format, just like a credit card number has a format. Gun serial numbers have a format depending on the manufacturer and so on. It goes on and on. Does the tool have the ability to say, hey, this is a you know, Ruger serial number and that's a Ford VIN, for example? Yes, as a matter of fact, uh, that we do that in our named entities and that technology is based on regex or regu regular expressions which are essentially a sequence of uh, characters that will find anything matching a pattern. So the query is for a credit card, it's those four digit segments with the space in between. Uh, we also have the LUN validator, which will tell us, uh, minimize the, the false positives for 16 string characters that may not be credit cards because we know what uh, each of the major credit card companies start with a, the same sequence of numbers. So we'll know whether or not they're actually valid or just a false positive. Uh, some of the other things we're able to do, and you bring up a great point about the Ruger, we are able to leverage deep learning uh, in that we can do image matching based on models that are publicly available or build our own, or clients can build their own. So they can find images that match for guns or bicycles or street signs or vehicles. So they're able to use those models and scan vast repositories of data to find images that are pattern matching or item matching within the image. Fascinating stuff. We're going to take a short break here, though. My guest today is Robert O'Leary. He's the head of investigations for Nuix USG and corporate Nuix. I'm your moderator, Tom Temin. This discussion is Federal Insights, Improving Digital Investigations in Government, sponsored by Nuix here on Federal News Network. 